So you might be wondering, because you're looking at a bunch of couches and a bunch of great looking folks. I'm just kidding. But we are excited because we're going to be doing something a little bit different. It is the Monday before Thanksgiving. So we wanted to do something a little light, a little exciting, just to kind of engage some of our leadership team. And we just wanted to have a panel. And pretty much what we're going to be focusing on tonight is thankfulness perfectly timed with Thanksgiving, but we really want to drive home some points that are in the hearts of our team members, which they'll introduce themselves in a minute, but basically what we're going to be talking about is thankfulness for God, thankfulness for our pastors, thankfulness for our team, and guess what? We're extremely thankful for you guys. Worship was off the chain, but I think that what really helped set that atmosphere was each and every one of you. You guys really laid it all down. You guys really pressed in and you could just feel the atmosphere. I honestly feel like tonight's, it's, it's special. It's definitely one for the books. So I'm going to turn it over to Berto, which I partially introduced to you, but you can go ahead and introduce yourself and share with everyone what you do here on Monday nights. Okay. So I'm Berto. So or in Robbie. case you called me Roberto, Robert, Robbie, from now on, it's Berto. Um, Monday nights here, um, I just come in and have fun. Um, we, I help oversee what goes on here in the sanctuary, but it's more so just coming in and having fun. So that's what I do. And my name is Anthony, and I'm just part of the team here. I just help out in any capacity that I can. Anything that Pastor Chris needs me to do, the core team needs me to do, that's what I'm here for. My name is Sabrina. I have the honor and privilege, 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 that's how you say that. The honor and privilege of serving on the core team and helping out in any way possible. You know, sign me up to clean some toilets, sign me up to open doors, sign me up to lead a meeting. Whatever is needed of me, I'm here for it, so. My name is Melanie and I'm the service coordinator and I also have the privilege of serving on the core team. Um, and I oversee anything that happens within the service. Hello everyone. How are we doing? Great, love the response. Anyways, uh, <laughs> my name is Nico. Um, I'm blessed to operate as a member of, of the core team for Monday nights. Um, and really, kind of just what Roberto, or Berto, I don't know how you want me to refer you as now. Um, <laughs> kind of how, how my friend over there uh, mentioned. <laughs> Uh, you know, I come here on Monday nights, and I, I really just like to have fun. You know, it's a great experience with great people, um, and, I, and I enjoy helping facilitate that for everybody. So if you guys can just join us in a quick word of prayer, bow your heads, close your eyes. Father God, we thank you so much, Lord, for Monday nights. We thank you for this ministry. We thank you for the leaders that are called to help carry the burden of equipping the next generation with the tools that we need, Father, to glorify you and your kingdom. I pray for everyone on this platform, Father. May we just simply be vessels for you, God. Whatever comes out of our mouth, it's not about us. It's not about what we're trying to communicate, Father, but it's about what you need your congregation to hear from you, Lord. So we thank you for your goodness, God, for everything that you've done, Lord, but we thank you with an expectant heart for everything that you are going to do. And it's in your mighty name that we pray. Amen. I'm excited. We have some great people up here today, some people that we, we do life with each other as leaders, but really I, I want to take some time to honor our pastor, Pastor Chris, which if you haven't noticed, he's not here, but I'm sure he's tuning in and he can hear us, but we want to be intentional and, and really thank him for having given us the opportunity to share from our hearts. He really gives us space as leaders to grow and really fosters an environment that just really raises us up and he, he's very intentional about pouring into each of us and our pastors, where we get to share this platform with our senior pastors. It's just an honor and, and a privilege. And Tuero, we were kind of talking about this earlier, and you made some amazing points about honoring our pastors, and I think that it's, it's kind of perfect to talk about this on a Monday night, because they really make room for the next generation to grow and rise up and, and do everything that we do. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, one of the best things about our pastors is that, like Sabrina said, they do believe in the next generation. Um, a lot of churches here in Miami and all across the United States, they don't really have the resources available to pour into the next generation. So they don't have youth groups, let alone young adult groups. Um, and so we're very blessed to have Pastor Steve and Pastor Mary who believe so strongly in the next generation that they allow this young adult ministry to operate free of charge. And what I mean by that is there's a cost for us being here on Monday nights. These instruments, um, there's a durability factor to them when they're only supposed to be used maybe once a week, they're being used now twice a week. 
So they're gonna get damaged twice as fast. And Pastor Steve and Mary said, you know what guys, we're gonna cover everything. Metro Life Church is gonna cover that because we know how important it is to pour in to the next generation. And so we're very grateful for our pastors. We're very grateful for Pastor Chris, who day in and day out is pouring into us, not just on Mondays, but on Sundays, on Wednesdays with the youth group, throughout the weekdays. Pastor Chris is always available for anyone and everyone. And we're just thankful for a pastor who makes room for us. Because honestly, we don't deserve to be up here. Pastor Chris is the one that deserves to be up here, but he knows how important it is to build up leaders, to multiply himself. And that's what he do he's done in each and every one of us up here and in many of you guys out there in the, in the crowd. So we're just thankful for that. And I wanted to share a verse with you guys really quick. It's found in Thessalonians, in 1 Thessalonians. Um, I'm not gonna open my Bible because I wanna read it from the Passion Translation. So y'all, if you could put it up, thank you so much. So this is what it says. Dear brothers and sisters, make sure that you show your deep appreciation for those who cherish you and diligently work as ministers among you. For they are your leaders who care for you, teach you, and stand before the Lord, Lord on your behalf. They value, they value you with great love. Because of their service to you, let peace reign among yourselves. We see all of those char characteristics of them cherishing us, of them loving us, of them working diligently for us, of them um, standing before us, before the Lord on our behalf. They teach us, they lead us, those are who our pastors are. And we are thankful for pastors like them because y'all, there aren't many pastors like them who truly believe in a young adult ministry in the next generation and who truly put their actions before their words. So we're really thankful for Pastor Steve and Mary and for Pastor Chris's heart. And then even to that point when we're kind of talking about honoring our pastors and, and I think that when we make room to honor those who lead us, I think that what we're doing is we're really inviting God's presence even more. So I think that that's awesome. And I kind of want to transition the conversation. I feel like this is the obvious one, right? Like we're, we're thankful for God, but I, I really want our team to spend some time talking about what that means and, and taking that to a deeper level. Because sometimes when we think of gratitude, we think of, okay, thank you. It's something that we say day to day, probably a million times. We're saying thank you to people left and right. Usually it's to be polite. But when we take time to really give God his place and to thank him, I think that we're really inviting his presence into our hearts in such a different way. And I don't know, Tuero or, or Nico, we were talking about this earlier too, but I, I want to spend some time really developing what that means, especially as a team. So I'll, I'll let Nico go because I feel like I talked a lot. <laughs> and I'm an <laughs> introvert, you. so I don't like to talk. So. Thank you. you were introvert. Kind of yeah, don't That's ask. a lie. That's don't fake ask. news right don't there. Don't he ask. is not an introvert. Wife, is he an introvert? No, he's not. Thank you. You're supposed to support me. Come on. <laughs> okay, anyway. Nico. <laughs> Great. Yes, we are talking about God. <clears throat> yes. Um, so uh, there was a there was a verse that I I wanted to discuss, um, and just really when I sit back and think about what I'm thankful for, it, it all really boils down to this verse for me, um, because it kind of goes back to to my experiences, um, and it's found in Hebrews chapter eleven, um, verse one if we can get that on the screens. All right, I guess they flipped the numbers on you, so I'll read what I have. That's quite all right. Hebrews chapter 11, verse one, and, and we've all kind of heard this, um, and, and it goes just like this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for uh, and the evidence of things not seen. And it's, I mean, when it, when it comes to what I'm most thankful for for God, it, it really is this idea of faith. Um, I've experienced many of things in my life, in my walk with Christ, that had it not been for the faith that he blessed me with, I don't know necessarily where I'd be at today. Um, I mean, just, just going back to this last season of my life, I can look back and, and, and just look at that season and say, wow, you know, God has, has blessed me with this with this faith, because there were moments where, and just to be transparent with you guys, where I didn't know what was next for me. <clears throat> Many of you know that I played football at FIU, and 
it was, it was difficult for me to figure out what was next. And it, 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 was, it was certainly a struggle. And as I'm sure there's, there's many struggles who, or, or many people who deal with those same struggles as not knowing what to do or what's gonna come next. Um, but I'll tell you what, I, I, I didn't stop going to church. I didn't stop coming on Mondays. I didn't stop coming on Sundays. And lo and behold, I mean, we hear it time in and time, time out, or whatever that, that phrase is, time in and time again. It's God's timing. And I think it's so amazing to actually experience that because a lot of the times we're, we're sitting in your seats and, you know, we hear pastors talking about um, these, these ideas, you know, these things to hold on to, these promises, but it can be tough when you're not pushed in, a, in, in an experience, when you don't experience something, you can't. Or not that you can't, but you, it's, it's hard for you to relate. And so the fact that I was able to experience something like that, where I completely had to put my faith on God, I, I, I had to say, you know, God, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I'm sure we may have all have had this at some point in our life where you're just like, God, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Like, do I even eat breakfast this morning? Like, God, I'm confused. I need help. <laughs> And I mean, just the, the, the fact that I was, I, I was surrounded by great people by coming to church, that I was poured into, not only by those who, who stepped on the stage, but just from people who were in the congregation, people like yourself, just having that, those, those surrounding groups of people did so much for me and they helped establish my faith and helped me realize that God, like it's not on me, it's on you, and I trust fully in you. And that was something that he had to develop in me, which I ultimately believe is why that season, um, you know, happened. And so for God, for me, I am just absolutely thankful for the faith that he blessed me with. Um, so I know, I know Anthony over there, you wanted me to go first, so if you want to... Uh... No, it was actually perfect that you went first because... I'm the biggest thing that I'm thankful for to God is, is the Bible says that we are saved by, through grace by faith. What Nico was talking about, that faith. But the one thing that we should all be thankful for above all things is salvation. That's the one thing none of us can get on our own. There's nothing we can do to be righteous before God. The Bible says that we're not saved through our works. There's nothing that we can do to get to God. And God knew that, God saw that. So what did he do? He sent Jesus Christ, his one and only son, to pay the price that we couldn't pay. He paid us, he paid so that we can be bought back from the hands of the enemy so that we may now not just be in his presence now, but eternally. And so, that's one of the things that we honestly have to really look at. The Bible says that we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. But the Bible also says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I'm thankful for that beyond measure because I wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for God saving me. If it wasn't for Jesus Christ one day saying, you know what, I'm coming down because they can't do this on their own, they need me. So I'm gonna put my life on the line I'm gonna sacrifice myself, I'm going to die so that they don't have to. And because of that, now we have eternal life. Now we have an infinite amount of mercy and grace and the infinite amount of opportunities to be with Christ and say, God, although I messed up today, your blood covers me for that, so I'm gonna keep going till tomorrow. And I'm so, so thankful for God for that. And as you're speaking, I, I kind of want to empower you guys to think about something that I once heard on a platform. As you're talking about grace, God's grace sustains us even when we can't feel it. Actually, especially when we can't feel it. I can't count the amount of times that as Nico was kind of hitting this point about almost blind faith, where you're in a season that things just don't line up, things don't feel right, and for some reason it feels off. But when you understand that God's grace never leaves you because he paid the price, God's grace is always with us and it sustains us. And if you take ownership of that, especially when you don't feel it, I promise you that that will give you the fuel that you need to kind of move forward.
But you know, you see us time in and time out each, each Monday. And one of the things that we really wanna always take time in, in honoring is our leadership. If you're a team lead, can you guys stand up for a second? If you're a team lead. Y'all are shy. They're too busy leading. Team right? leads, team leads. Give them a round of applause. I love these people. I love all of you, but I think I love them maybe 2% more. No, I'm just kidding. But our team leads really help kind of carry the burden of the ministry. They show up even earlier than is asked of some of our other leaders. They leave extremely late. But I think that it's important for us to kind of carve that time out because when you guys see what you see on a Monday night, the hour and a half that we spend with each other, the time of our worship, the time of our prayer, the time that we're speaking up here, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much that goes on on a weekly basis, day in and day out. I can't count the amount of phone calls I have with Melanie and our core team and Pastor Chris, planning everything out and really hashing out the details. And all that is, is for you guys, but we really wanna kind of spend some time to talk about that. So Melanie, you are our beautiful service coordinator and you're the one that kind of helps facilitate the show out here. So can you tell us a little bit about what that means to be thankful for our team? Yes, um, and I feel like it's something that we say a lot as a team, that this is not a one-man show. This isn't something that just five people put on every single week. This is literally a team effort to be able to execute everything we do on a Monday night and things we do outside of a Monday night, like our awesome turkey bowl. Who wants a turkey bowl? Yeah, it was fun, right? Yeah, I know. Um, so, um, you know, we have the setup and teardown team who are First one's in, last one's out. We have people in the hospitality team serving you free, fresh coffee every single week because God knows we need that coffee. We need coffee, yes, and we amen. Have, yeah, we have the get team who makes you feel welcomed. We have the prayer team who prays for you every single Monday. We just have so many teams and literally this would not be possible without each and every single person who serves at any capacity, whether it's a small role or a big role. We're just so, so grateful and thankful. And there's this verse in Colossians 2, 23, 24. Let's take a put it on the screen. Awesome. All right, and it says, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your own, as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. And I just want to encourage those who serve to continue serving. Keep sowing those seeds on the ground. This is fertile ground and not just financially, but also with your time and with your service. What you do here on a Monday night is means so much and it's only going to give you a bigger inheritance from God and really help you grow. And I wanna encourage those who don't serve yet to sign up and serve because what we do here is, is like what Chris, Pastor Chris said last week, it's not um, that we are, uh, we are the solution, but we are part of it. So whether you serve coffee on a Monday night or you greet someone walking in, sign up because like he said, we're not the solution, but we're part of it. And every little detail counts. And God is looking at you. He is watching you. He sees every detail. He sees your heart through it all. So if you want to sign up to serve, contact a team member, you know. And also, I want to encourage those who don't serve yet to not go in with the mindset of, I don't know where I want to serve or do I even have time to serve. Go in with the mindset that you are part of the solution and that will literally yeah. propel you to want to serve. Yeah. And do it with the right heart. I love that. I love that. I love that we talk about that because I think that sometimes even as leaders, it really kind of humbles you in a way because when you take into account that none of us are the solution, none of us make this happen, but collectively as a team, together, we're able to do this. And I kind of want Nico to spend some time also talking about teams because he does help lead our, our pre-service meetings, our post-service meetings, and probably one of the most energizing people, but can you talk a little bit about what, what it means to be thankful for our teams? Yeah, you know, I, honestly, and I'll, and I'll just start with um, kind of what I tell our team every week. Um, and it's, it's really just about how thankful I am for them and, you know, the, the willingness that they have to, to come out every Monday night, you know, and, and to realize that it's not them serving themselves. They're not serving because they're here with friends, but they're serving because... This is God's will. This is God's will for our lives to serve in some capacity, in some ministry, in his church, in his home. And so, because we, we're talking about God, we have to go to his word, of course. So I have another scripture for you guys. Um, and it's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I use my phone because I felt like flipping through pages. 
I don't know, I, I would have like dropped the book or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14, um, and it says, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And if you go down a little bit to uh, um, verse 18 through 20, it says, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. And I absolutely love that verse because that is the epitome of teamwork. You know, if, if, I'm, if I'm missing an eye, I can only see out of this one. I'm not capable of doing my best because I'm missing an eye. And I think it's so cool that when we put, when, not, when, not even when we put, as you saw, and, and this is something I wanted to highlight, as he chose, for those of you who serve on Monday nights, and there's, there's multiple ways of serving, as kind of, you know, Mel just mentioned. But for those of you who serve, I mean, God really chose you guys. God really chose you, and I think that's such an awesome thing to hold on to. Because I, I talk about it all the time. We don't always get the opportunity to do this. You know, people in other places do not get the opportunity to do this. There's people across across the, the world who, you know, God forbid they say the word Jesus, the name of Jesus, you know, and we have the opportunity to not only hear from God and hear, you know, from our pastors, but we get to serve God. Meanwhile, there's people across the country, some, not, the, not necessarily the country, but across the world that are, that are running. They're running and we have the opportunity to sit in these nice comfy couches <laughs> and talk about Jesus like, it's, it's so awesome, and, and the people who put it together are those who are on the team. And, you know, just as the saying goes, or the scripture rather, as iron sharpens iron, so, when, so one man sharpens another. And when you decide that I, you know, God, I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna do this, you start to realize that you put yourself around these people that are intentional with their relationship with God. And then that starts to change you a little bit. And you'll realize that you'll start doing things that you didn't normally do before because this is what God wants you to do. And you'll realize that you'll start to operate in a different being almost. And, and God just begins to elevate you. And God begins to do things in your life because he sees that you are intentional, that you are putting him where he belongs. You are saying, God, I'm serving you. You're not serving me. I'm not waiting for your blessings. I'm not waiting for you to take care of me. I'm gonna take care of you. And whatever you have for my life, that's just what it's gonna be. Yeah. And so for, for, for our team members, I mean, there was something as I was looking up this scripture, um, it was kind of like a, a little commentary, and he said, um, teamwork is the key to living in harmony so that we can do God's will. And I think that's so, that's so cool. That is really, really cool because teamwork is, is vital for God's will. It's, it's that important. And, as the body of Christ, as we can culminate, as we can come together, we can effectively do God's will. Yeah. And so I'm thankful for our team because if it wasn't for our team, I would be by myself. <laughs> I would be all by myself. I don't know what I'd be doing, but because I'm a part of a team and, and not just a normal team, not like, not like a, a, a team that, I don't know, works at McDonald's. I guess I don't, I don't know who else refers to themselves as a team besides like sports. But anyways, I think it's so cool, like, because as a team, we are evidently doing God's will. And I'm thankful for our team because they, like you guys, if, when, like when you serve, you're allowing me to work with you in being a, a team and ultimately doing God's will. And that's, that's like number one on my list. Number one on my list is, hey, God, you know, do God's will. And the rest will fall into place. And so I know that kind of that goes back to, to the faith and everything. But, I mean, it, again, if you're part of this team and you serve, like, God sees it. Yeah. You are sowing seeds, like Melanie said. You are sowing seeds that you will reap a harvest at some point in time. It may not be the time that you want, but it will be the perfect time. Yeah. So, again... I'm, I'm not trying to do a little uh, ad lib of, of 
if you want to serve, contact us. But truthfully, it's not about the help that we need. It's about you. And when you serve, God opens doors. And really quickly, I just want to add to that. Um, I want you all to think about you holding, carrying a big stick with pails of water at the end on your back. There's a weight to that. And so Pastor Chris holds that main weight of this ministry. The core team comes along, Pastor Chris, and they say, Pastor Chris, we're going to carry this weight with you. So they get, get alongside him, and that it, it takes away some of the weight from Pastor Chris because now they're sharing it. Them four and Johnny, who's somewhere around here running around, they carry that weight with He's Pastor Chris. right over there. There he is. Hey, Johnny. So they carried that weight with Pastor Chris. And when you join our team, you get alongside Pastor Chris. You get alongside this core team. And you take some of that weight off of them. And you do not know how big of a help that is to Pastor Chris because it now allows him to trust in other people to carry the weight of this ministry and for other people to do what God wants them to do. So to all of you on the team, thank you for carrying the weight of this ministry. And really quick, and before we transition to our next point, I kind of want to spend some time talking about what Nico said briefly about, you know, God sees it. God sees you serving. I will never personally forget that there was after a youth service. This is when I first started serving many years ago. And I did not know a place. And if you know me, I'm, I'm pretty extroverted. I talk to a lot of people. But for some reason, the moment I walked into church for the first time, I didn't have friends. I didn't really know a lot of people. I was so quiet. Everyone scared me. Everyone was really nice. And I was confused by that. I was just like, okay, someone just give me a task and I'll do it. On the Enneagram, I'm a three. So if you know what that means, you just know that that makes sense. But I just wanted a task, a task that I could complete. So in my heart, I knew that I helped the church and that I could go home and I didn't want to talk to people. So I decided to join the cleanup ministry is what we called it on what was back then Friday nights for our youth. And after every service, after all these little middle schoolers and high schoolers poopied all over the toilets, okay, it was gross. I went in there and with a happy heart, I cleaned it. And I'll never forget that there was one service that no one that was on the team showed up. So I had to go to the men's restroom and I had to go to the women's restroom. You would think the women's restroom is cleaner than the men's, but I don't know what was wrong with the ladies that night. It was a mess. And I was on the brink of crying because I had to clean all this by myself, by myself. But in that moment, I was really empowered because I said, okay, God sees my heart. God's gonna bless me through this. And if you've ever had a, a chance to even talk with me on a personal level, my entire walk with God has consisted of blind faith and doors that he's opened that I don't deserve. And God has just been so faithful. And I think that part of that has to do with the fact that no matter what serving looked like, whether it was scrubbing toilets or standing up here right now, well, I'm sitting, but sitting up here right now, being able to share my heart with you guys, God sees that. So I want to empower you in that as you consider how you can help, how you can serve, whatever it is that you're doing, not only are you helping the functionality of the church, but you're advancing in the kingdom of God and God recognizes that on your heart. So just kind of think about that and let that sink in. But as a team, why do we do what we do? Why did I clean those toilets? Why are any of us sitting up here, right? And that's you guys. It's very simple. You guys are our reason. Obviously, the first reason is to glorify God. And how do we do that? By serving his people, by opening these church doors, by making sure that everything is running. You guys are our why. You guys are exactly why on a Monday I wake up and I'm excited that it's Monday and I'm not like, oh God, Monday again. It's because of you. And, and Berto, I know that we, we talked about this and I really want to encourage you to spend your time on this. I know that the clock says otherwise, but I want you to really kind of dig into what that means because you said some really powerful things earlier when we were talking. Yeah, so before I start, I want to get opened with uh, Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Uh, so if you can put that, wow, that was fast. Teamwork. Okay, so it says 24, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet, to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day draw near. Um, and this, this, really, this really touched my heart. Um, this chapter here opens up with 
um, an explanation on why the cross happened and how um, the old way of doing things wasn't really working out. And so Christ came um, to end our sin once and for all. And so it opens up with explaining how, hey guys, you know, we needed Christ and it, it, it shows that we're all sinners and it closes by saying that, but let's walk in grace. Um, and the fact that we can all come together and agree on one thing and it's just that we love Jesus Christ, I think that's so huge. Uh, we don't have to like the same teams. Um, if you know me, I'm a Jets fan um, in Miami, so you know what that means. Um, many of you that are UM fans, I'm sorry to say, but uh, FIU is... Pause up. Pause up, baby. Um, <laughs> We still love you. FIU you. is, you know, you know, I'm just saying 30 to 24, but. Um, Let but, us have our moment of glory. <laughs> we can enjoy it. Just I had to bit. sneak that one in there. I had I to. Didn't, I didn't want to do it, like, dude. Perfect like, moment. I didn't want to do it right on. <laughs> I'm glad you did it because then that means I didn't have to. Thank you, Berto. Um, but honestly, guys, um, what we do here on Monday nights, we're so grateful that you're part of it. Uh, we're so grateful that we can come here and serve one another. Uh, every single Monday night is a miracle. Every single Monday night is a miracle in motion. Every single Monday night is a miracle. And that's something that I'm so grateful for because without you, we wouldn't be able to walk in miracles. And, and you guys, you guys really come together and serve each other. And, and that's something that, you know, I'm truly grateful for, um, Every single conversation that we have, every single connect group, every single dinner party, every single interaction, every single smile is something that we're all truly grateful for. Um, Sabrina hinted on how we have our post-service meetings and we talk about some wins that we have, you know, some wins that happened. The worship team, you know, did really great today and, and the lobby was exciting and Guys, I promise you, every single Monday night post-service meeting, there's something about a breakthrough that happened in someone's life. You know, a prayer that finally came through, or someone that we need to start praying for, or someone that hadn't come in three months, but they're back. And guys, if we really think about that, it's all about you guys. And I promise you, every single Monday night, it happens. And so we're just grateful that we can come here and do life together. We're grateful for the fact that we can come into a place in this great country and worship God together, that we can put everything else aside and just love on each other. Um, and it's not about, you know, who we are or how we got here. It's about what God has called us to be. And so as, as the culture is telling you, you know, to be offended by everything you see as to walk in offense. You guys come in here and you're open to truth. And I think that's very honorable. I think the fact that we can tear down the walls of everything we were before we came to Christ and come in here honestly and asking God to convict us and tell us the truth, I think that's something honorable, guys. Because you guys, the, the culture's going this way and you guys are going this way. And I, I, I'm, I'm honored to be around people that aren't worried about what the culture is telling them, but they're choosing to set the culture. And as, as many are the thermometer, you guys are a the thermostat. You guys are setting the temperature in the room. And that's something that I'm grateful for. And, and I can look at like every single person and I just, I just smile looking at you guys because I'm, I'm honestly so thankful for every single one of you. Every single one of you, I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for, sometimes I'm, I'm sitting here in worship and I can't stop smiling. And it's because we can come together and do this. And honestly, um, I might have never had a conversation with you, but I love you, okay? I love you, all right? I love you. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, you guys are amazing. Everything we do is for you guys. We love, we love, we love, we love serving you. We love coming and going to war with you. We love when you guys come up to us and tell us something that you need, to, you need us to pray about. We absolutely love to get involved in your lives. We love when you share wins with us because 
we can celebrate these wins together. You know, it's not about me or Anthony or Sabrina, Mel or Nico. It's about what we do together for Christ. And when one wins, we all win. When one aches, we all ache. So we love getting involved in your lives. We love doing this with you. We've had a grateful year. Um, We had a a great year that we're grateful for. Um, um, but, But yes, guys, we love that you're around. We're so excited for the new year. We're so excited for the next service that's to come that should wrap up the year. Um, But really, guys, we love you so much from the bottom of our heart. And everything that I said is an extension of what comes from our leadership. They love you guys so much. They're constantly praying for you. They're constantly hurting for you. Um, And and they really really love you guys so much to, as Anthony say, let us do this on Monday nights. And that's something I'm grateful for. So, That's awesome. And, And just to kind of summarize, as I'm hearing you talk, one of the greatest things that I can think of out of that is that you guys are truly setting the pace for our generation. You're not setting the pace for this room. You're not setting the pace for FIU, UM, Nova, whatever other university is out there in Miami. You guys are setting the pace for a generation. And I think that you should really take hold of that, take ownership of that. And just to kind of wrap up what we were talking about in our time here today, I really wanted to spend some time talking about when I think about gratitude, what I see. When I think of gratitude and being grateful, I had briefly mentioned earlier, it's not just a phrase, it's not something that we just say to be polite. But when we think about gratitude in the context of being Christians, it's a posture. It's a posture of surrender. I can't tell you the amount of faith that it takes to look a situation that you probably shouldn't be grateful for. It might suck, it might be difficult, and it takes faith to say thank you, Jesus, for this season. Thank you, God, for taking me through a refining moment that I needed. But when you're able to have the faith amidst that situation to say, thank you, God, there's power in that. There's power in that because what you are doing is you're acknowledging God's place in your life. You're saying you are the God of all comfort. If I acknowledge you and I submit my heart to you, God, I know that you will make my path straight. Although it doesn't look that way right now, although it doesn't feel nice right now, God, I'm gonna acknowledge you and I'm gonna take a posture of absolute surrender and gratitude. And for me, that's one thing that has really kind of carried me from season to season where I just say, you know what, God, thank you for this. Because if this is a good season, God, thank you because it feels nice and I love it. But if it's a bad season, God, this is a lesson that I needed to walk through in order to make me stronger. And I wanna share a Bible verse with you guys that, that I had briefly talked with our team. It's Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Do we have that? Yes, we do. So I'm just gonna read it from my phone. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I love this because it gives you the step-by-step. It tells you plainly that to make your requests known to God, your prayers heard to God, that you need to take a posture of thanksgiving. You need to take a posture of saying, yes, God, this is your battle. You've won it. This is yours. And I'm going to let you take control of that, God. And I'm going to thank you with an expectant heart for what you're going to do. And I love this because our our team is just an example of this. Everybody on this platform is just an example of really acknowledging God, being thankful. We're thankful for you. We're thankful for our pastors. We're thankful for a God who is just absolutely perfect and loves us, especially when we don't deserve it. Guys, I thank you so much for for giving us your undivided attention. We're going to close out in a word of prayer. So if you can, bow your heads and close your eyes. God, we thank you so much for the next generation, Father. We thank you for Monday nights. We thank you for the fact that we can come together, that we're free to come together in this amazing country and just celebrate a holiday like Thanksgiving, Father. 
I just pray for peace, that as we sit at the table with our families, that your peace that truly surpasses all understanding, because we know that when we're with family, things can get heated and crazy, God. But we know that your peace will be ever present with us, God. I thank you for everyone that decided to be here on this Monday night. I thank you for everyone on this panel, Father. I thank you for our leadership, our pastors, and everyone else that makes Monday nights possible, God. We love you. We admire you, God, and it's in your mighty name we pray. Amen.